On this point of psychotherapy not being perfectly designed for men, I was watching a clip before you arrived um, where a lady who's an author of a, a book that's just come out said that talking about our problems makes them worse. And I was wondering if that's true. It can be. So I think this is a big problem, is that talking about our problems can absolutely make things worse. So let's understand a couple of things. So the first is that there's this assumption that talking about your problems makes them better. But there are actually very specific things that need to happen in order for talking about your problems to make things better. The most important thing is something called an emotional catharsis. So this is where you have like a breakthrough in therapy. So there's like this moment where there's a lot of dormant stuff, and Freud even described this, where you have this moment of very, very intense emotion that is relatively new. Or, I mean, it's kind of dormant, but it's not like venting. We'll get to venting in a second. And so there, there's a particular way we have to talk about problems that triggers emotional catharsis. Emotional catharsis creates something called, like a breakthrough so this is also like an experience. So this is not just talking about my problems. This is experiencing my problems in a different way. So it's kind of like touching the hot pan. Mm -hmm. Usually it's kind of painful. So when we're doing like work with a trauma survivor, we don't want to just talk about the trauma. We want to sort of dig into it a little bit more and have an emotionally healing experience. Um, the, the real problem is that sometimes what will happen is people will just talk about their problems. So they'll use therapy as essentially like a venting session. And venting, if we look at kind of the neuroscience of venting, venting is useful for reducing our negative emotion in the moment. But this is the really tricky thing. If we kind of think about it, you know, like I'll ask you, maybe you know this, maybe you don't. But why do we have negative emotions, Stephen? It's a signal. For what? It, I, I, would, I would guess that it's a depends on the negative emotion, but I guess it's a signal that is there to help us connect with people. So, oh, okay. So let's. I, like I think it can be sure. Loneliness. Loneliness is a great example yeah. of a signal that's designed to connect with you. What about something like anger or fear? Why do we have fear? To warn us against an impending danger. Absolutely right. So if I'm like running through the jungle, and I see a tiger and I have fear, fear gives us information, and what else does it do? Gives us a physiological energy and Very good. adrenaline. Absolutely, for what purpose? To flee. Absolutely, so this is a big thing that people don't understand. The primary motivator for change is actually negative energy, a negative emotion. So this is the problem with venting. If you vent and get rid of all of your negative emotional energy, the drive to change will disappear. So if we kind of think about it, what motivates you the most? It's actually negative emotion. And you can literally look at the, like, the neuroanatomy of things like the amygdala. So the amygdala is very close to the hippocampus, which is where learning and memory happen. So we actually learn the most through negative emotions. So if, I, if, I'm, if I've been happily married for 15 years and there's infidelity, right? One case of infidelity. The negative emotion from that one case of infidelity can drastically motivate me. So one of the biggest problems that I see is that we try to get rid of our negative emotions, and in doing so, we actually hamstring our motivational capability. Mm. So the, I've seen this a lot, where people will come in and they'll go through like what they think therapy is, which is like, actually, same, same guy, Mike came in and he'd like kind of talk about his problems. And I was like, bro, I was like, Mike, is this helping? So I was still a trainee at the time. So I, he'd been seeing me for about six, eight months. And I was like, you come in here and you kind of talk about your problems. But like, you you don't seem to be getting better. I didn't know how to do therapy at the time. And then he's like, isn't that what I'm supposed to do is come in and talk about my problems? I was like, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I was a second year psychiatry resident, but I was like, is this helping? And he's like, no. And I was like, okay, we got to do something else then. Coming in and just venting is not actually psychotherapy. That's not like, so talking about your problems, reducing your negative emotional energy can actually keep you stuck. And if you pay attention to people in your life, you'll notice that there are some people who just like bitch all the time, right? They're just like constantly complaining, they're constantly venting, and they don't actually do anything to change their life. 